What I've learned in my travels is that photographing kids can be really harmful because they can portray kids as an accessory or as painting them with a broad brush. There's this thing called poverty porn, which is imagery that kind of glamorizes poverty. And there's a real history of visitors coming to marginalized or underprivileged areas and taking photos that grossly oversimplify the story and accessorize the people who are often children. So this is a really important conversation to facilitate with other travelers because it's a really important historical context and we don't want to perpetuate a negative stereotype, especially if we're white people. This morning, we are going to go to my Mahio town. Uh, we're going to have a tour and see where I grew up. It started not as we are going to see it today. It was a very small town. Everybody knew everybody. When we started Ubuntu, there was not many people. Not many people even knew about uh, children with special needs. But today, many people have come to the town and we can be able to introduce to them what we have been doing. On our walk in Maimaihi, we were there with Zane and Jeremiah, who are the co-founders of Ubuntu, and they were giving us the story and the context. I spent most of my time not shooting, but talking and interacting with the kids. We were quite the spectacle because it's not a town with a ton of foreigners, so we attracted a lot of kids. Growing up in uh, Maimaihi, we knew all about cultivation, and uh, most of the people, that's what they have done. When I was growing up, deforestation has happened quite a bit. It has affected the people in a big way because from the time I was growing up when we were harvesting lots, now that is not there anymore. So people struggle a little bit. With uh, all the economy growing, we are happy to see the improvement and the growth that is happening here. I've been working in Africa for 18 years. And in the beginning, my mindset was these people are in need and so they're happy with whatever we give them. And then as I've spent more time here, that's the furthest from the truth. They're people just like us who want to provide for their families like we all do. So they want basic things like to work for a great company and have health insurance that can cover their kids when they need to go to the hospital like all kids do when they get sick. I spent most of the morning without my camera. When I did take my camera out, it was because a kid wanted to see it or when I really felt comfortable. I think that a lot of knowing when you should and shouldn't have your camera out in these types of situations comes down to how you feel about it. You kind of fine tune your moral compass in a way of like, would I do this in my hometown? I had conversations early on with some friends when I first lived out here and I was asking them why the disconnect from Westerners to Africans and Africans to Westerners and this guy said, you know what it is Zane, it's one very simple thing. Most of the world looks on Africa through eyes of pity. We don't want your pity. We want opportunity, just like anyone. That was like a light bulb moment because it broke my stereotypes that I had learned just from being an American and having the images that I had had of Africa. Yeah! I'm really excited to go to Lake Naivasha because it's the first time that we will see wildlife on this trip. On this trip, I have two Sony A7R3s. I have my 24-70 f2.8. I have the 85-1.4 for portraits, and then I've got a 70-200 f2.8 and the 100-400 f4.5 5.6 for Safari. I have my Peak Design 20-liter everyday backpack, and I have my Pelican case carry-on. I do have a tripod, but I pretty much only use it for astro or low-light situations. I love the wide scenes because of the trees that are just coming out of the water. Minimum shutter speed that I would go for in this kind of situation is like 1 over 400. And then you just kind of want to adjust your aperture and ISO accordingly. I love the serenity of what this looks like behind me, but also I'm loving the people with the birds and the dizziness of the whole scene. I guess I'm looking for a bunch of different things, but whatever is standing out as important.
This is what you are gonna see on My Travel Diary Kenya. When it comes to photographing tribes, it just comes down to respect and making sure you're not treating people like a museum exhibit. I love wildlife photography. My favorite thing to do is just show the charisma of animals.